So let's take a look at five tools that you can use to help improve the production value of your stream, make your stream more fun, make it easier for you. We've got five different programs. The fuck do I have written my script here? Few rules before we start. We're not gonna be talking about Streamlabs or Stream Elements because like pretty much everybody knows about that. And if you don't, then this is probably not the right video for you. We're also not gonna be talking about any stream automation tools. So no streamer bot, no Leorn board, no Sammy, no Atom. I think those all deserve to be in their own category. So we'll talk about them in another video. Before we get started, uh, everybody follow me on Twitch. Um, I usually try to do that at the end of the video, but like, let's be real. Most of you guys aren't even gonna make it to the end. So um, do it now. All right, cool. Uh, let's get started. Hello, my friends. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Now, have you ever had trouble pronouncing this word? And so naturally, you go on Google and you try to look it up. I'm an, I'm an anemone. Anemone. Well, guess what? Now your ISP knows you don't know how to read or everything else that you look up. You know, you know what you did and you should be ashamed of yourself. Well, ExpressVPN makes it way harder for ISPs, advertisers, nefarious Twitch viewers that are trying to ruin your life to track what you're doing. Their servers are super fast, faster than any other VPN provider, and they don't keep any logs of your data so you can safely search for that thing you're really embarrassed about with total privacy. Click the link down below and get three months of ExpressVPN totally for free. The link also helps me out, so I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring this video. Okay, first up, how many of you guys use controllers on your stream? You don't? Okay, um, just skip to the next one then. This little widget shows your controller inputs. So all your button presses, stick movements, and they all animate really smoothly and just look so clean. It's called Gamepad Viewer and it's got skins for your Xbox controllers, PlayStation controllers, even fight sticks and NES controllers. I used this like six years ago back when I used to play games on my stream. I don't, I don't really do that anymore. Gamepad Viewer has been around for a really long time, so it doesn't look like they've updated the skins for any modern consoles like Xbox One or PS5. But the point is, this is the cleanest looking Gamepad Viewer that I've personally ever used, and it's really, really easy to install. You just go to gamepadviewer.com, plug in your controller, select the skin, and it automatically recognizes all your buttons. I've got a PS4 controller and all the buttons animate and are mapped perfectly. Even the touchpad animates, which was surprising to me. Then if you wanna add the widget to your stream, just click the hamburger menu, click generate custom URL, pick the skin that you want, and then copy the URL. Then you just go over to OBS, paste that as a browser source, just like you would for any overlay from Stream Elements or Streamlabs. And that's it. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to launch any programs. Everything is keyed out perfectly for you. So everything will be there the next time you open up OBS. Now, if you're a keyboard user, there are OBS plugins that can show your keyboard inputs, but we'll cover those in another video. Next up, we got a program that allows you to read Twitch chat. Are you serious? That's it? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't recall asking for your opinion, okay? Go back to sleep, Kevin. Anyway, so the program is called Chatterino. Now, yes, some of you may be asking, why can't I just open up Twitch chat in a Chrome tab like literally every other person? It's got a few features that are really handy for streamers. Like for one, you can change the fonts and the font sizes so it's easier to read. It supports all of the popular emote platforms like FFZ, BTTV. Plus if you use the link down below, there's a version that also supports 7TV. Another feature I really like is the split view. So if you're streaming with your friends, you can open up all your different chat windows and have all your different streams in one window so you can keep track of everybody's messages. But if you don't have any friends, which I can relate to, uh, you can just open up your Twitch chat twice, but you can set it up so that one split has all of your messages, but then you can set filters on the second split 
so you can filter out just sub messages or just messages from your moderators or just messages from stream elements so you can keep track of all your sub alerts and stuff. It's really cool. And while we're talking about other people's streams, if you install a program called Streamlink, you can open up other people's streams inside of a VLC window. And the best part is this way you don't get any ads, which is great because we all hate ads, except for me. Turn off ad block because I want, I want your ad revenue. But the best feature to me are the mod buttons. So next to everybody's messages, it's got these handy little buttons so you can delete people's messages or quickly time people out or ban them. However, these buttons are customizable. So if you right click in this green sword, you can add your own mod buttons here. And so I've set it up so that I can have a quick button to shout people out. So if I wanna shout someone out, I can click the little shout out button that I made next to their name and it will shout them out in chat. Or I set up another button to translate people's messages. So if somebody's speaking to me in like Swahili or something, I can click the translate button and then it will translate the message that they wrote. If you want to know how I translate messages, I already have a video up on my second channel explaining how to do that. So uh, yeah, go go sub to the second channel. It's where I upload videos kind of like in this channel, except I don't really care about views there. So the production value is like way worse. But uh, yeah, go sub to that channel. Okay, so let's talk about audio now. So there are a lot of tutorials out there showing you how to EQ your mic and add filters to it to make it sound really good. Unfortunately, most of those tutorials only work inside of OBS. As soon as you wanna use your microphone outside of OBS, it sounds trash again. Equalizer APO allows you to add filters to your mic at a driver level, which means you can get high quality audio in every program like Discord, Zoom, Audacity or literally anything else. Pair that up with any free VST plugins like the Reaper VST plugins, which people keep telling me isn't free. It is, okay? I do shit for a living, okay? I know what I'm talking about. You can set up your audio so what your friends hear in Discord is no different to what your viewers hear on your stream. So just install it from the link below. Once you get to the configurator, it's gonna ask you to pick a device. Just go into the capture devices tab and select your microphone and then click next. It's gonna ask you to restart your PC, which it has to do if you want this to work globally with every program. Just open up Equalizer APO and you can start adding VST plugins the same way you would inside of OBS. So I got the configuration editor open and what I can do is I can click the plus button, go to plugins and add a VST plugin. And I have this VST plugin called GForm, which allows me to pitch shift my voice. So if I click open panel, click apply automatically, I can turn this knob down. Now, now I can sound like the devil. The, the, the stream devil. Everything that you apply, wait, sorry. Everything that you apply here will apply to every program. So if I was to go into Discord now and talk to someone, they would be hearing exactly what I set up here. So what about cameras? Because I like adding lots of different camera angles to my stream. It just makes my stream more fun, gives my viewers more variety and things to look at, like the fact that I'm not wearing any pants. What you looking at, huh? Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, yeah, phones, yeah? So your phone probably has a really good camera. So that's where DroidCam OBS comes in. DroidCam OBS lets you use your phone as a wireless webcam for your stream. Now you could use this as a replacement for a dedicated camera, but me personally, I like using this as a way to quickly switch to a hand cam every time I wanna walk around my studio and show my chat something. And I know that there are apps that can do the same thing, but I like DroidCam the best because one, I think it just looks the best out of all the apps that I've tried. But two, look how fast it works. Look, I just unlocked my phone and then that's it. It just connects instantly and you guys can see all around my studio, my, my studio, okay? It's not a bedroom. I'm not gonna bother showing you how to set it up because the website already shows you how to and this video is too long. So I wanna move on to the next thing already.
One of the problems with having a two PC setup is you have to have a separate mouse and keyboard just to control the second PC. Barrier allows you to share your mouse and keyboard so you can control multiple PCs over your local network. If you've ever heard of Synergy, this is basically a fork of that, except back when it was good and not all corporate and gross. I don't have a two PC setup. However, I do have this secondary display monitor. So this display is what I use in my streams to show off things like a bit menu and all of the fan art that people send me. I already know I'm gonna get a million questions asking how to set up something like this. Well, we'll talk about that in another video, but the point is this whole unit is a completely separate PC that I need to control with a mouse and keyboard. So I can hit a hotkey on my keyboard and now my mouse is controlling this PC. Look at that. Look how cool that is. The way this works is you'd set up barrier on both PCs and you'd set up the PC that has your mouse and keyboard as the server and the one that you wanna control as the client. So you're gonna have to put the IP address of the server into the client. Then in the config, you can set it up so that when your mouse hits the edge of the screen, it automatically goes to the other PC. I don't really like it this way, so I go to the hotkey tab and I just set a hotkey there so that way every time I switch between PCs, it's like a deliberate change. Once you've set a hotkey, you can just back out, click start on both PCs and they should both recognize each other and connect to each other and then you can hit your hotkey to switch back and forth between each PC. But yeah, a perfect way to control two PCs. So guys, if you wanna know how I set up a monitor like this, Make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna make a video of this probably in like three years or something because I take forever to make videos. So uh, yeah, guys, what do you think of the list? Was there a favorite tool that you liked? Is there a tool that I didn't mention? Leave a comment down below. And while you're at it, uh, go check out my Patreon. Uh, it's a cool way for you guys to give me money. Uh, also, I make widgets as well. So if you guys see any widgets on my stream that you like, Maybe check out the Patreon because maybe maybe I'm giving you guys the download there. So check that out. Uh, other than that, um, I need to go record another video right now. So uh, leave me alone, okay? Go watch another video.